and welcome to Life Lessons in Bon Jovi Songs. And we have arrived at the Song of Songs, Live It Out of Prayer, because it's the most uh, highly recognized song from Bon Jovi. So their most, yeah, their biggest, their biggest success. Like, like if people know one song, it's this song. So um, yeah, I'm kind of setting myself up for failure here because you know there's really <laughs> you can't you can't say anything about this song without it being basically just ridiculous <laughs> it's like if you would be like um beginning a beginning tennis player and then like play the world champion you know like that's kind of like the you just open your mouth and you want to say something about living up and it's like completely bogus immediately so um uh, I think I've, I've, I find, I found a way around it, um, but yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. So um, in this series, I'm kind of like taking it album by album. So we're at the third album, Slippery One Wet, which is their big breakthrough album. And uh, um, Living on a Prayer was the the uh, second single from the album, and it was it is. And it's the third song on the album itself. And the reason why this album really brought them the fame and the recognition that they were looking for, and also the reason why uh, uh, I think their their uh, uh, um, their songs "You Give Love a Bad Name" and "Living on a Prayer" made so much impact was because they had teamed up with a songwriter. Desmond Child. So up until then, they wrote, uh, you know, like Richie and John were the 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 songwriters for Bon Jovi, and um, now they brought in this, you know, this powerhouse of a songwriter, <laughs> and um, he was the guy who had made uh, uh, "I Was Made for Loving You" with Kiss, and he also made a lot of other commercial work with uh, hard rock, uh, rock artists and bands. Um, so this was really like his specialty. This was his, his niche, even though he has made uh, uh, like really big pop hits as well later on in the late, late 70s and early uh, 80s, he was really known for being able to, you know, take take a good rock band and make them great, or give them that, you know, that really that, that big hit or that big breakthrough with a broader audience. So he did it with Aerosmith, he did it with Kiss, he did it with Bon Jovi, he did it for Alice Cooper. So, um, uh, so this was this was his thing. Now I <laughs> I don't know if. If Bon Jovi really realized that they had like the specialist that they had been looking for, because this my child told uh, uh, said that just a few years ago he found out that that uh, John and Richie were actually not even planning on using the work that they were going to um, write. They actually thought. Like, oh, we're going to write some like, really big hits with Desmond Child for, and we're going to give them to other artists so that the money that they make, you know, so that we start making money from the songs that we have written with Desmond Child. They didn't think that what they would come up with would be material for them. And, um, like, this is something that. Desmond Child only recently uh, uh, said. So um, uh, at the time, he just thought, okay, I'm going to write with Bon Jovi. So he, he comes uh, at the house from uh, Richie's mother and, or Richie's parents. I don't know if they were together, but anyway, in you know, <laughs> I've heard the phrase, the basement from Richie's mother. So, uh, uh, um, I'm just going to assume for now that that was correct. Uh, and in the basement, John and Richie wrote a lot of songs for Sleepy One Wet, which is known. And um, 
So the first time uh, Desmond Child, I don't know if he actually if they, he actually came into the basement or if they, you know, if he came to the front door and and uh, 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 and they saw him in the living. But either way, he came over and he like got a little um, uh, paper from his back pocket and he said, "I have a title here. I just came up with it during like." When coming over here, I was thinking about you give love a bad name. How do you feel about that? And John's face just lit up. <laughs> he was like, great, you know? So that was really like within, I don't know, five minutes or something. You know, John tossed in this sentence of um, shell through the heart. And uh, um, they had they had the chorus they had the chorus from uh uh you give love a bad name so it was kind of like a done deal from there like there was no way they were <laughs> they were going to give anything that came out of this collaboration to anybody else they were going to use it so the first song was you give love a bad name and then living on a prayer and um it was because john wanted to write a song about a working class couple that was um had difficulty to really make and that was struggling to make ends meet and uh john had a couple in mind that he and dorothea had known in high school uh but those were not the names that were actually used in the songs the the, the uh the song the, the name names that were used Tommy and Gina actually came from it started with the Gina part Gina was the name or the alias of 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 the girlfriend from Desmond Child so Desmond Child was was living in New York in a one red bedroom uh, in a one room apartment with his girlfriend Maria with whom he was in a band and um, uh, Maria was also working as a waitress and her name as a waitress was Gina uh, because she lo looked like, and now I'm, I don't know if I, uh, I haven't like practiced pronouncing it, but it's uh, from Gina Lolo Brigida, it's a, a, a question mark. So that's a, a famous uh, 50s actress and um maria looked like gina so that was why she, her waitress name was gina and um uh desmond child's name original name was johnny so desmond child said well why don't we just call uh them uh, uh gina and johnny but then of course john bon jovi said well that's impossible because i'm i'm already johnny johnny's already taken <laughs> saying about myself so the name the suggestion that it was Gina and Johnny which was Desmond Child and his then girlfriend as a struggling couple um, that was dropped and it became Gina and Tommy because Tommy kind of like sounds the same as uh, uh, Johnny so they went with that and the rest is history you know, Tommy and Gina feature in a lot of Bon Jovi songs. I always forget which ones, but it's, I, I think there must be like four or five uh, after Living on a Prayer where they, uh, where the names are used and like come back in. So, um, uh, yeah, so this is, this is the first, this is like their, their origin story is Living on a Prayer. And, uh, um, so uh, um, that was how Living on a Prayer uh, uh, came about. It was one of the first songs that they wrote with Desmond Child, with whom um, they kept writing songs for the rest of their career, basically. Um, uh, Desmond Child also wrote a lot of songs for other people. And he, he said that he had written 4,000 songs in his, in his career, 1,200 
uh, were recorded and um, 80 became top 40 singles or hits and 10 became uh, uh, top 10 hits. So he says you have to write 4,000 songs to get 10 real, what he says is really good ones. That's what he says. So, you know, obviously in this context, really good means, you know, really successful, really big hits. So I think that's just such a good, uh, um, uh, such a, such a good life lesson, you know, like keep, keep writing your songs, whatever it is. And that the, 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 you shouldn't be working for that 10 that make it into the top 10 or the 10 that are the best, or you shouldn't be aiming for your living on a prayer or your, uh, um, you just love that name. It's about the 4,000. It's about, you know, the body of work that will bring forth your, your highest work or your, most known work but that's not you know that's not the that's an, a result or that may be a result from writing those four thousand songs so in whatever way you express keep doing it keep keep creating your four thousand songs because that's that's what it's about and maybe you will write uh <laughs> living on a prayer and i mean Writing your songs like metaphorically for whatever your art form is, whatever just flows out you and you know that you like doing, keep doing it because that is that is the real the real um, um, yeah that that's the real work. That's what what life's about ultimately. I mean, you could also say that it's about love and relationships, and I get that, but I mean, I mean professionally from a, a, a creative or creator point of view it's about it's about going all in in you know in, in in creating in bringing it forth and whether or not one day you look back and you say oh wow I had 10 top 10 hits or not that's you know it's not even up to us really it's like <laughs> you can't aim for that. You can't fight for that. All you can do is the work of the 4,000 songs. So that was the life lesson for today. Life lessons and my Joey song. And um, next time we're going to do song number four from this album, which is Social Disease. And it's kind of like a, it's a, a little bit of a weird, weird song. But I do think that in particular, because we're now in the age of social media, it has such a different connotation. It's such an interesting title now that um, you know most of us are reevaluating our um, relation to social media, and um, yeah, social disease. Let's do it next time, next week, or in two weeks. Um, I'll, I'll try reading next week. <laughs> yeah, so see you in one week from now for a life lessons in Bon Jovi Zone. Bye.